So when is it that you're selling? I don't sell anything. So you just do this? Yeah. Forever and forever. Yeah, no. So we're a marketing agency as a, on a base level, but no, this is, this is purely to give out as much value as I can. But my question wasn't necessarily about yourself, yeah. but in general, when you post or whatever, create this content. Well, okay, so you, at the beginning, one of the things that you came in a little late, and one of the things we talked about before is value is made up of three things. It's made up of storytelling, engaging emotion, and solving people's problems. Okay, so when you're making posts, if you have a product or service that solves a problem, great. Now, if you can couple that with one of my other pillars of value, then even better. So, you have a product. Um, what do you sell? Sorry. What's the business that you're involved in? I'm selling products to help entrepreneurs scale up their businesses. Okay, so you're selling, let's say, coaching services. Yes. Okay, so you're selling coaching services. What does that solve a problem? You make a post saying, one of the problems that I see in a lot of businesses is X, Y, Z. Okay? So what that does right away is it says, I'm teaching you how to solve a problem. Number two, you tell a story about it. I've been doing this for years, and the thing that I've discovered is da 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 Right? You've now told a story, you've solved the problem, but you didn't say at the end of the, the post, call me, click below, click link in bio. Go to my website, call me if you need help, I'm, I'm there for you. Because the hard sale, when you're looking for a short-term sales cycle, is what teaches people, that's what the noise is online, that's what teaches people to skip over your content, in comparison to just offering that amount of value. Now, I didn't hit that example perfectly for you, but essentially, what is something you always see as an issue, and then tell a story of how you've seen it transpire in your life. That, would, that wouldn't engage emotion unless maybe someone, that was a heartfelt story that someone else experienced the same problem, but you hit two of the three points. Okay, so you don't sell them. Let's yep. say you have an Instagram yep. post, five minutes, ten minutes, you don't sell nothing there. Nope. What if you have a client at the other end that's like, wow, I really like this message. How They're going to call you. They're going to find you and they're going to call you, right? Because so the touch point cycle, the reason we developed the touch point cycle that I talk about is because a sale, it doesn't matter what you're selling. I could be buying cookies. I could be buying uh, champagne glass. I could do anything. But whatever I'm buying, I have to be ready to buy that product. Most of the time, very few people are going to just say, see a champagne glass on a random day and say, I'm just going to buy that champagne glass. You still need to have timing. I still need a glass in my house. Or I still have to show off. I need a china cabinet to buy the glass to put in, right? Like, I still have timing. So if you create all these subconscious touch points and then run an inbound, then when the timing's right, people are going to see and remember you, and you're going to be top of mind. OK, I haven't talked about top of mind yet. I'm going to go off on a tangent here in a second. So top of mind is another philosophy that we look at. How? If I'm a car dealership and I sell a car, okay, the average person doesn't buy another car for five to seven years. That means for five to seven years, by the time their lease is up or when they're coming back to trade it in or they want a new vehicle, I have to stay at the top of their mind. And that works for every product and every business because they only need a new car every five to seven years. So that means for five to seven years, I'm going to be making content. I'm going to be providing value staying top of their mind so that when their timing is right and they're ready to buy again, they remember us. And if I slip anywhere on that timeline and they forget about me, then some other manufacturer, some other dealership is going to be putting out valuable content that they're going to see, they're going to remember, and then they're going to go buy a different make of car or a different brand of car. Now again, that, that doesn't take into consideration some loyalty items and some other stuff, but I'm looking at it on just a base flat level from 10,000 feet. You have to stay top of mind until the timing is right for your customer. So to answer your question, if you're coaching, if you're a business coach, and you are trying to close a client, well, you can now boost strategic, valuable posts to those clients. You can boost directly to the name of their company, right to the title of people that buy your services. But you're not selling in that boost. You're providing value. You're saying, I know. X, Y, Z, I've seen this in my life, I'm telling a story. You're boosting that out with no sales message. And then people see you over and over again, subconsciously remember you, 
you stay top of mind for when they have an issue and their boss says, hey, you know what, we need to get a leadership consultant in here. We need to get this team more cohesive. We're losing them a little bit. And they say, yeah, no, I know the guy. I've seen him on LinkedIn for the last six weeks straight. I'm going to go give him a call. And then they go and make the call. What I noticed, there are people out there, they cannot even connect these dots. Like, oh, I know that guy. Or they are too lazy, or they don't know how to look for it. Okay, so then they, what do they do next? The call to action, right? what, do they, what do they do next? So what I'm saying is, no call to action on social. And listen, I'm not saying no to call to action ever. I'm saying subconscious inbound. Okay, so there is a call to action. But... Social media is not the place to try to monetize your audience. Where you're monetizing the people that can't connect those dots is on Google. Because what are they going to do? They're going to say, oh, I need a leadership consultant. They're going to go leadership consultant Red Deer. And whoever pops up first is who they're going to click and call. That's where the dots go. On the simplest level, they're just going to Google leadership consultant. Now, you have a couple options. You can either do Google AdWords. You can pay for ads. You can focus on Google Maps optimization, and you can be the first organic that appear on Google Maps when someone's searching on mobile. And then number three, you can focus on search engine optimization, and you can move yourself up organically so that you're the first person that gets clicked on when someone searches for that. That's the time and place to monetize the audience when they can't connect the dots and you're not top of mind. You're just you're, you're capitalizing on the fact that they need someone now. But when you're building an audience and you're building up relationships with people online, that's not the time to monetize them. That's the time to offer them value because if you're doing that, they're going to remember you when the timing's right. Yeah, I agree. Does that make sense? Yeah. So Google, Google AdWords, ROI. That's like capitalize when you need somebody. Photography, Google AdWords, maybe photography keywords. Direct ROI when someone's searching for you if you haven't done SEO. If you don't have a website, if you're working on Google Maps, AdWords with a location extension, you'll appear a little nice green dot on Google Maps. Everyone's going to see you. And that works for any business.